Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting complex exponential problem. We have z to the power z equals 1 and we're going to be solving for z values. Now z equals 1 looks like an obvious solution, doesn't it? Is there another one? Go ahead and check out this video for more information on this topic. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how we can write z to the power z in exponential form. So we can use the identity z to the power w equals e to the power w ln z. And ln z is the logarithm of a complex number, which we can write as ln of the absolute value of z plus i times the argument of z. And of course, there's the principal argument, there is infinitely many values, so on and so forth. I'm going to avoid all those complexities and just jump into this problem. So let's go ahead and use this identity for w equals z, which means the base and the exponent are going to be the same. So z to the power z can be written as e to the power z ln z. So anytime you see e to the z ln z, you can also replace it with z to the power z, which I'm not sure if, uh, if it's going to help, but anyways. Now, notice that we have one on the right-hand side, but that's a complex one, right? So how do you complexify one? You can go ahead and write it as e to the power 2 pi n i. Because if you consider the argon plane, which is made up of the real axis and the imaginary axis. Oops, I missed, I kind of mixed them up. This is the real and that's the imaginary, right? So we can basically represent any complex number as a point with two coordinates. So one happens to be on the real axis because it is a real number. And then its distance from zero is one unit. So its absolute value is one. So we don't have to worry about it. And we can kind of think about the argument, the angle, as 0 radians or 2 pi radians or 4 pi radians or just any multiple of 2 pi. So in this case, n is an integer, right? So e to the power 2 pi ni represents 1, but there are infinitely many solutions because you get a different value for uh, each value of n. Make sense? So let's go ahead and see how we can figure this out. We got a nice equality. Let's go ahead and ln both sides or just think about the exponents. z ln z equals 2 pi n i. Again, n is an integer. i is the imaginary unit whose square equals negative 1, right? Awesome. Now, what does this look like? Well, here's the thing. ln z and z. That should ring the bell, hopefully. But we can write z as e to the power ln z, can't we, right? Because it's z to the power 1, right? And then, does this look better? Let's go ahead and switch ln z and e to the ln z. So we can write it as ln z. And let me go ahead and use a different color here, like ln z and e to the power ln z are being multiplied together. And that gives us 2 pi and i. Does this look familiar? If you said yes, it should be like t e to the t, right? This is going to be my t here. What does that look like? Lambert's w function. Great. So if you said Lambert, you got it. If not, then it's okay. Hopefully you'll learn something new today. Now, Lambert's w function is basically the inverse function for t e to the t. When you apply it on t e to the t, you get t. Of course, there's multiple branches, so on and so forth. But again, we're going to keep it simple and write this equality one more time. ln z times e to the power ln z equals 2 pi n i. Again, n is an integer. Okay, We're going to go ahead and w both sides with our special function. And we're going to get an output of ln z from here, which is nice. And that's going to be the w of 2 pi n i. Obviously, this is a general way to write it. But again, we're looking for z. How do we get z from here? We can do e to the power of both sides like this and like that. 
So e to the ln z again is going to be z. You see, we can kind of convert back and forth, which is a very helpful identity. And z is going to be e to the power w of 2 pi and i. Again, n is an integer, positive or negative, or 0, right? Can it be 0? Absolutely. And we'll look at that. So if n is equal to 0, if n is equal to 0, then we get z equals e to the power w of 0. What is w of 0? How do you apply Lambert's w function on 0? Let's go ahead and take a look. Definitely we can write 0 as 0 times e to the power 0 because e to the power 0 is 1 and 0 times 1 is 0, right? Hopefully there is no doubt about it, like. And this gives us 0 because look at this. This is my t e to the t. Hopefully you like t, right? And in this case t happens to be 0, so the outcome or the output is 0. So that's cool because w of 0 is 0 and z is equal to e to the power w 0 which is e to the power 0 which is 1. Remember at the very beginning we talked about an obvious solution and that happens to be z equals 1. But is that the only one like 1 1 right? What about what about z equals 0 right? I know some people are going to be like there is no way 0 to the power 0 is equal to 1. But again, go ahead and check out the video that I shared with you at the very beginning, and hopefully you'll get a better idea. Well, this is a highly debatable, very highly controversial topic, and I'd like to hear what you think. Please let us know in the comment section down below. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then. Be safe, take care, and bye-bye.